Let us try an example to analyze a frame structures. The substitute frame here is subjected to the characteristic actions which is uniformly distributed along the beam. The permanent actions is 25 kN per meter, while the variable actions is 10 kN per meter. The beam has a section of 300 times 600, and the column has a section of 350 times 300. The upper column is 3.5 meter, and the lower column is 4 meter. The effective length of the beam is 6 meter, 4 meter, and 6 meter. You are asked to analyze the shear force and the bending moment acting along the beam and the column. You may pause the video for a while for you to work out the solution. To solve these questions, First, you need to determine the stiffness of every single element of the frame. This includes the beam and the columns. The care is obtained by these equations, which is equal to EI per L. The second moment of inertia is obtained as BH power 3 per 12. Since the entire frame is made of reinforced concrete, the E is constant. They may cancel out each other, therefore it can be ignored. The second moment of inertia for the beam and columns are calculated here. The K for the beams are determined by their respective effective length, as obtained here. Same goes to the columns. With that, the K of the columns and beams are summarized here, which is in the functions of 10 power negative 3. Next, we need to calculate the distribution factors. It is obtained based on these equations, which is the stiffness of the respective member to the total stiffness of every element to the same joint. For joint A and D, there are only three elements. The total stiffness of the joint is determined by summing the stiffness of the three member. As given here, 1.48. The joint B and C here constitutes of four members, two columns and two beams. The total stiffness of the joint here is given here, 2.38. The distribution factors for the beam here is obtained by dividing the stiffness of the beam with the stiffness of the entire column, the upper and the lower column. The total stiffness of the upper and lower column is 0 0.58. As for the distribution factor for this member here, it is determined by dividing the stiffness of this member with the total stiffness which is equals to 2.38. You will obtain 0.32 as the distribution factor for the beam at joint B here. Repeat the same process for you to determine the distribution factors on the columns and on the beams of each joint. The distribution factors are outlined here. Theoretically, the summations of the distribution factor on each joint should be equals to 1.0. This should also be 1.0. Based on the distribution factors given here, we will know that the beam will take about 61% of the moment, while both columns will take about 39% of the moment. Next, we need to analyze for the fixed end moment of the beams. 
Using the load set 1, for 3 continuous band, you will have 4 combinations of loads. The load combinations will be something like this. There will be alternate between maximum and minimum. And there will be 2 continuous members with maximum which swift along the spans. We're going to analyze the first load case first, which gives us the maximum, minimum, and maximum load arrangement. The maximum load include the QK, while the minimum load disregard the QK. The equations for fixed end moment will refer to the table of equations here. In the analysis of the frame, the end support here is no longer considered as a simply supported. It will carry the moment together with the column. With that, the fixed end moments for the maximum and minimum are obtained as given here, as illustrated in the diagram here. You will see here there is differences between the fixed end moment at both ends of the beam. And for the time being, the moment still yet to contribute any resistance to the moment. Therefore, you're going to expect this moment later is to be redistributed to be sustained by different elements of the frame. With that, we have to go through a calculation step to distribute the moment. The calculation step for moment distribution method is similar to a continuous beam. The difference now is the columns are taken into account in resisting the moment. The distribution factors for the column here is referring to the summations of the upper and lower column. To determine the different moment taken by the upper and the lower column due to different effective height of the column, it will be calculated at the later stage of the analysis. For the time being, we consider that entire column is in one piece. These are the distribution factors that we calculated in the previous slides. And the fixed end moment are given here. The fixed end moment will be distributed in accordance to the ratio of the distribution factors. The beam will take about 61% of the moment, while the column will take about 39% of the moment. When come to the joint B, the differences between the fixed end moment is determined. Then the differences of the fixed end moment will be redistributed in accordance to the distribution factors. In this case, this member will take about 32% of the differences between the fixed end moment, while this take 20% and this take about 48%. Next, the moment will be distributed to the opposite joint. After distributions, the moment reduced by half. Same goes to the opposite joint, distribute back to this joint. You will repeat the same calculations for the other joints. Next, the moment is distributed again based on the distribution factors to obtain the balance here. Same goes to the differences between the fixed end moment are to be distributed in accordance to the distribution factor to obtain the balance here. The same process being repeated until you reach to a state where the balance becomes relatively small in comparison to the fixed end moment. 
the final moment acting in the column beam and the respective member is determining by sum up the column from the fixed end moment. This means that this value is obtained through summation of this, while this value is obtained through the summation of this, and this value is obtained through summation of this, and so on. It is noted that the fixed end moment at both ends of the beam may not necessarily be the same. This is mainly due to different stiffness of the member due to different effective span of the beam. However, the summations of the moment at each joint should theoretically be equal to zero. If the summations of the joint here is not equal to zero, that means most probably there will be some calculations error throughout the table. And in this case, the frame is symmetrical both sides. You will expect a mirror of the moment at the both sides of the frame. This figure shows the value taken by each member including the column of the frame. Next, you will proceed to determine the reactions of the members by using the static equilibrium equations and then followed by the shear force diagram and bending moment diagram. The member may be analyzed in the separate sections. The moment here on the beam are referring to the final result of the analysis based on the moment distributions method. From there, you will obtain the shear force diagram. And from the shear force diagram, you will have the bending moment diagram. Next, you will repeat the calculation step for the other three types of load arrangement. This gives you a total 4 set of shear force diagram and 4 set of bending moment diagram. Overlay the shear force diagram and bending moment diagram together, you will obtain the envelope bending moment and shear force diagram. Write down the largest shear force at each position and the largest and the smallest moment at each position. The envelope bending moment and shear force diagram should look something like this. With that, you may design the beam member in accordance to the moment and the shear force diagram here. Next, you need to determine the moment acting in the upper and the lower columns. It is determined by using the same concept of the degree of stiffness out of the total moment. The equations to determine the moment of the upper and the lower is determined by multiplying the respective stiffness divided by the total stiffness of the entire column. Since the moment to be sustained by this column and this column differ, which is this and this, by using the ratio based on the equations given here, you will obtain the respective value. The moments for the upper and lower columns are listed here. It can be represented by the bending moment diagram for the column here.